We're here at the Graphene Pavilion at Mobile World Congress. If you don't know what graphene is, it's a purely carbon-based material. It's one atom thick, and it's super light and super strong. That means it can be used for all kinds of different technology applications, and we're going to take a look at some of those now. I'm here with my friend Inigo, and um, he is part of a company that is already producing graphene and bringing it into, into the market. So if you could just come over here, Inigo, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. I mean, we see this chunk of, of, of what, what is this? This is original graphite, right? Yeah. And this is what, where we start with this product. So tell us a little bit about the process. Yeah, so as you mentioned, that's a rock of graphite. Uh, right now, as you said, this is uh, 2018, so it's been uh, 14 years before, after uh, the discovery of graphene, when it was first isolated in the University of Manchester. And at that time, what they did was basically take a piece of graphite and uh, mechanically exfoliate it until they got the one atom thick layer that is graphene. So let's say that from that moment on, the main one of the main challenges was to produce this in a, obviously an industrially uh, way so it can be affordable and it can be integrated in the industry here's a kiosk uh, everything here is dealing with the datacom ap applications of graphene so i'm here with renato and renato tell us what you have here um, you've been able to basically put graphene uh, on plastic and glass and create a Wi-Fi sensor, is that correct? A Wi-Fi receiver. I'm sorry, a Wi-Fi receiver, yeah. We are actually showing a complete link and for the first time we have actually graphene. We replace the RF front end typically done in CMOS or so with graphene-based integrated circuits. So we have the transmitter and the receiver and because of the the feature of the graphene, which is a two-dimensional material, so it just needs does not need the substrate below it or a specific substrate. We are able to produce this on plastic, so it becomes very flexible. Right. And of course, low cost as well as glass. It's transparent, as you can see, and it opens up the possibility to produce this for or to apply this for wearable devices, uh, biomedical applications where you have to wear it on your on your body. Um, but also low-cost applications, RFID techs, uh, IOTs, and um, many other applications as well. And the idea is that in maybe a current handset, for example, you'd have a silicon chip and that's thicker, more expensive, whereas something like this is you're looking at a cheaper, thinner, more flexible option. This is one part, but you also have to think that devices are becoming terminals are becoming flexible so you get the flexible screen and also electronics has to be flexible to some extent it has to follow this trend and um, this is, will be one solution right so uh, maybe it'll be in the first bendable phone uh, well we have to still to bring it from from let's say from research to uh, to scalable production so we can do this on fairly large scale but to bring it really on mass production that's another step and it's it's definitely a challenge to do though but it's, awesome. it's doable. It's doable. Like right, 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 right. Well, thank you, Renato. Uh, I'm here with Paolo, and we're going to learn about one of the unique applications of graphene. It's a superconductor, so it charges very quickly. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah. Thanks to SuperCaps, we thanks to SuperCap based on graphene, we can think to charge a phone in about seven seconds. Considering that we can reach uh, around 100 kilowatt by kilo, which is really, really huge. Actually, uh, compared to to batteries, this kind of device, you can uh, charge, as I told you, and very, very, very quickly charge and discharge. This thanks to graphene, because graphene has a very large surface, so you can store more energy. And the other thing is that graphene is like a highway for uh, charges, so charges can move very, very quickly, and so you can reduce in a dramatic way the resistance of the device, and so you can have a very huge power. For this reason, we work on this kind of device, but we can think to integrate in the future in different, for different kinds of uh, application. In our case, in the Thales group, uh, we work on avionics. For avionics, so you can put that in, um, in uh, aircraft, but also you can use it also for mobile, also for automotive market, actually, where you need, uh, where you need super caps uh, in case you are running inside the town, where you need to accelerate and to brake, and when you are in the highway, use the battery, that battery are devices that deliver energy in a very constant way compared to uh, super caps, actually. Thank you so much, Paolo. It was a pleasure. I'm here with Vito and he's going to tell us about how graphene can enhance in, uh, the speed at both ends of optical fiber. So tell us a little bit about what we have here. Yes, here we have the first uh, uh, 25 gigabit per second optical link made with graphene photonics. We have graphene at the transmitter side and the receiver side 
and uh, uh, graphene can uh, enhance this kind of links in terms of efficiency and speed, both at the transmitter side and the, the receiver side. Here, uh, an optical fiber uh, is used to feed the light into the transmitter, where graphene can modulate the light from an, an electrical signal at the input and convert it into the optical signal. At the receiver side, we can do the uh, conversion from the optical to the electrical, thanks to graphene as well, just uh, with a, a passive uh, silicon photonic chip where graphene acts at the active layer. Um, and, and in terms of the speeds that you're clocking on this, I mean, how does it compare to just a regular optical fiber? So at the moment we match the, the state of the art of the, for this kind of device, but we can improve the efficiency at the transmitter side by a factor of 10 with respect to silicon photonics. And at the receiver side we uh, already demonstrated a very high bandwidth up to 100 gigahertz. So uh, this is very, very high speed device compared to the state of the art. Thank you so much.